right and here. The, and the feathery tail, probably. The the it's tail will be fine. Requests be for the super nylon. light on that right side. Okay. All right. How did you come up with the idea of let's make art? Well, Jamie, that that is a story. <laughs> Mainly. Probably a bit long. Yeah. Holly, if you need to lighten the graphite paper after you've traced, you can just erase it. You can take yeah, an eraser and, and lighten it. It's not going to erase it completely. Jamie, we will answer your question. I don't know when. Right now? No. Yeah, Maybe right another now. time? We got time? We got, time? We got one minute. We got one minute. Well, yeah. the story is Al wanted to get his wife watercolor supplies because his wife's name is Drea. She's super cool. She, he knows that she wanted to watercolor. He went to an art supply store's website and it took him so long to find watercolor and it took him like a billion clicks and he still wasn't even sure what he should get because there is so much out there that he just thought like, hey, let's do something about this, right? Yeah. So then he called me and he was like, hey, you're an artist. And I'm like, yes, I am. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, how would you change the online shopping experience? And so we just started from there then kind of going back and forth. And then we try and make the art experience be more about education and community and making it easier for you. So it's not so complicated and overwhelming. So anybody can just pick up and go. Fun fact, Sarah wanted to name the company. I like water. I like color. <laughs> not true. I vetoed it and Listen, called it. Let's make art. that is not true. But I would like to say that Al named this company before I came on. I would like to say that. It's a great name. I'm just saying I wasn't a part of it. Ryan wants the jingle. He wants the jingle. <laughs> we should get a jingle. We did one last week. I forgot we what it was. <laughs> no, it's the spatula. Oh, one. no. City one. You did have one last week. Let's make our... Yeah, 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 let's yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's go time. It's go time, you guys. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to Let's Make Art. We like to watercolor and we have so much fun doing it and we do different projects every single week. We tell you what we use. We send you kits and supplies if you want and then we paint together every Tuesday night and it's so much fun and I love it. So this week we are doing Ah, Jill the Squirrel. She's great. She's an actual animal. She has her own Instagram account. She does. <laughs> she does. That's awesome. It's called This Girl is a Squirrel. That's her Instagram account. And she's so cute. And so her um, owner said that we can paint her as a project. So I used one of those photos off Instagram and I added a little crown and that's what we're doing. Um, we have Natalie here with us. Thank you, Natalie. Hello. Hello. And we have Jake. Hello. Welcome, Jake. He hasn't been on since the B, so it's been yeah. a few months. And we have Al, as always, being our cameraman, host, <laughs> singer. It's great. He's doing great. Um, so with this project, uh, we have an outline. If you have the kit or the sub, it should be in there. If not, you can find it on our website at letsmakeart.com. Yes, under the squirrel project. Go click it, print it. Click it. Download it. No, just print click it. it, print it. Twist it. You're good to go. Bop, Bop it. it. <laughs> <laughs> now, with, with your, um, when you have an outline, we use graphite paper um, to trace. You just put your graphite paper dark side down, and then you start. Can they see that overhead? Oh, uh, yeah, they can. See. Is that a good um, Wait, darkness? No, I'm so sorry. Listen, I know that's a lot to ask for an art store. <laughs> hey, it's okay because that side's dark. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You're fine. See, mine side, my side's even darker there, too. You're fine. All right. They got the overhead. Okay, cool. So that they can see that pretty good, though, yeah? Like the outline? It looks really good. Yeah? You want to see okay. one that's a little darker. So this is what happened with Jake. He started to go dark. And I was like, bro, lighten up just a little bit. Bro, lighten up. <laughs> and he did. Right. He did, I and it's going to be great. You really don't have to push as hard as you do. You, you have you to really barely don't. press it. But test your graphite paper, because if you're not, there's like different brands and different things. So just kind of test it. That's why I tape it down, so you can lift it up and kind of check it and see if you need to adjust your pressure. Lighter pressure is a lighter line. OK? Jake, need an eraser? Uh, you do you would, have a pencil? 
I don't L. know. I think that dark line is fine, you honestly. Oh, okay. oh, there it is. Is there any Let's racer? Is it? No. There's no racer. No. <laughs> Okay, so we have, we're using two brushes today, a round six and a round two. And uh, we have four colors. We have black. We have golden brown. We have cyclamen. Cyclamen. And olive green. Those are our four colors to get this squirrel going. And I'm gonna start putting it on our palette. Now, if you order our palettes from us, you might think like, oh my gosh, my palette is defect defective because it's bent. It is not defective. That is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be bent in the middle. So that way you um, put your colors along the side and that way they don't bleed into each other. But if you put your colors right in the middle, they're gonna like spread out. So put your colors like kind of on the inside line of your palette. I have this like irrational fear, like I've missed do you like look at it 50 times to be like, don't take this paper off? Because what if? <laughs> I don't look at it 50 times. What if I don't times. have an ear on there? If you don't have an ear, you eyeball it. You're going to miss a line ear. sometimes when tracing. Don't stress. You just eyeball it. Diane wants to know where Jill's back feet are. Her so back it. feet are covered. They're buried by her. They're buried by her, her so much fur. She's like a fluffy fur. You know what? Box. I should have posted actually the photo that this picture Can was we? based off of. You think so? Listen. I have great ideas in hindsight. Why are you always shipping orders and never posting funny feet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're there. They're just underneath the bro, fur. Like, bro, lighten up. <laughs> <laughs> bro, line it up. This was the end of our golden brown. So thank you. Poor, poor brown. Poor brown. Okay. So hopefully you guys are tracing yours and getting ready to paint. Um, what warm ups will we do today? Oh, and we have an oath too. Gosh, you guys, I'm going crazy. You're good. You are Just doing excited. good. Okay. So before we start with our, oh, Deborah wants to know where our outline is on our website. Go to our website. There's go a link in the description. Link in the description of this video. Of this video. Click, Click that link. If Does it take them right to, right to Jill? And then you, you scroll a little and there's a big button that says outline, you click it. <laughs> what? I didn't mean to sound as sassy as it was. Oh, sorry, did that there's sound? A huge button that I didn't says mean the biggest button. I didn't mean there's to say that sassy. I just meant like it's there. <laughs> with other things. There's a lot of things. I'm moving on. Yep. Uh-huh. One hundred mouse <laughs> points yep. could click it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let's um do our warm-ups, but before we do our warm-ups, let's take our oath. Everybody. Take our oath seriously. We take this serious, okay? This is art. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I, I am Whoa, Jacob. whoa, I didn't see anything. <laughs> I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind, to, be kind to, myself. to myself. I promise not to compare my work with others. And definitely not to not compare, compare myself. myself. To work to others. others. With others, great. With others. And I promise to have fun. And I, and I swear to have fun. <laughs> to have fun. <laughs> Good job. Good job, you guys. Or I die a thousand deaths. <laughs> From little needles. And we like to do that oath because sometimes we get all worked up before we paint because we're nervous. We're like, what if it turns out bad? Or what if I can't do it? Listen, you guys can do it, first of all. Am I out of the way of this? Second well, of all. It's just for fun. We're having fun here. It's a great time. It's not serious. It's just paint. It's just paint. It's just paint on a paper. You're making shape. You're making marks on a paper with paint. That's all it is. Okay. I don't mind the way of that camera because yeah. sometimes oh. it gets in the way. All, all right. right, take us there, sir. Okay, we're gonna start with our warm ups. The first warm up we're going to do is we are going to do a value change from dark to light. We do this warm up a lot. If you've done this with me before, um, you've it's done like it. that tray in a little bit. Right? Yeah. Can you share with me? Is that okay? Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to um, pick up a lot of paint on your brush. You're going to dampen your brush. So you put your brush in first with the water, kind of hit it off the thing so it's not soaking. Pick up a bunch of paint, whatever color you want, and you want to make a dark wash on your paper. You're just going to kind of do this right here, kind of like a rectangle shape. Okay. Now this is going to be your darkest value. So it should be strong with paint. Yep. <laughs> I've, I've and then, they all look black to me. 
but then they turned out it was green. It was, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I should have like told you which colors are what. Then you're gonna rinse your brush, totally rinse your brush, and you're gonna leave off where you started, and you're just gonna grab that paint and drag it across, like that. And that should give you a nice dark to light gradient. So we want the left side to be the darkest, and we want the right side to be the lightest. And your lightest mark is going to be like barely there. So sometimes you have to rinse your brush again to, um, to get that full range all the way to that lightness. Great. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. And let's just do it one more time, just so we're used to that. Because that is probably what I use a lot. <laughs> probably is. Probably. Could be. Probably the most used technique, I would say. So you do your dark, this is your darkest value, then you just right where you left off, you grab the paint and drag it. And you want to do it kind of quickly before it dries. And you just move it across. And then I could go even lighter than that, go all the way. Now, what you want to watch out for when you're doing a gradient from dark to light, you don't want to mess around. You don't want to um, go back and forth too much. Because if I go back and forth like this, uh, blah. and this triangle, it's uh, not, it's blah. not blah, blah, but that makes it an even wash. So you see how this triangle is now, or rectangle? I know shapes, it's fine. <laughs> see how this rectangle is like an even wash now? It's because we just kind of blended it out so much that it's just an uh, even value which is not a bad, those also come in useful too. That's just um, not what we're practicing right now. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna practice is we're gonna practice this like kind of tail movement here on the end, or like whooshing, that's what I'm gonna call it. Now the great thing with round brushes is they have a big belly and a nice fine tip, so you can get a, what? No, excuse me. So they, <laughs> you can get a thick stroke and then uh, thin it out just depending on your pressure of your of your holding your paintbrush. So I want you to grab some paint and um, add a little bit of water to it so it's not like super dark. We want it lighter than that. And I want you to practice doing this like whooshing motion. So it kind of so it thins out at the top. So I like to push my paintbrush away from me and almost lift up a little bit as I go out. And then it thins up at the top. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, wait, wait, I haven't started yet. That's fine. More. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep going. Whoosh. And I'm doing like a curved line because this tail kind of curves, it goes out and back in and back out. So I'm gonna just do the top of the tail, which is it's curving out. So you, Wait, are you going from like, like the brush so kind of? uh, let me see let me no that's a great that's a great question so I kind of just have the brush totally just sideways, like sideways and then I push down because when your brush is sideways and you push down you get a nice thick line mm -hmm. and then as I move it away from me it thins out okay. by kind of lifting up and lightening my pressure now, maybe I'm giving you too much direction that it's almost confusing you. If that's the case, then just start kind of playing around and seeing what you can do. Abort mission. Because sometimes it's like, for me, I, sometimes when people give me too much direction, so I'm like, wait. Different color. No, it's just, it's just black, you're fine. Is it, but this, is that brown? That's golden brown. You're good, we're using that color. It's right here. Where is this color at? I mixed the golden brown with the black. Oh, I see what you got going on. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. But you just want to like, so you're doing more of a straight line like this. Yeah. You want to curve your line. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Success yeah. story. Yes, yes. Jake, you're there doing it. it. 1,000 times yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Why can't you be more like your sister? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie's got it. Oh, these are brother and sister if you guys don't know. <laughs> That's why you said that. Actually, you all are siblings. <laughs> okay, so that's like the motion we do for the tail. The one other thing, no, we're gonna go over two other things, okay? We're gonna go over our little fluffy furs. See how like 
It has a white fluffy stomach and it has some like shading on it. Go on. So let me tell you a little bit about painting fur, okay? Which is? Painting fur what? <laughs> That's a Missouri joke. <laughs> <laughs> if you're painting fur, F-U-R, um, your brain knows that it's fur and there's like tons and tons of little hairs. That's what your brain is telling you. And so when you go to paint it, that's what you're gonna wanna do. Cause you're like, I know that there's a billion little hairs on here and you're gonna wanna do like a ton of tiny little brush strokes everywhere. Cause that's what your brain is telling you. Um, but the thing is, is we don't actually see things that way. We actually see things depending on light and shadow. And so usually when I'm painting fur, I kind of just um, pick out where there are shadowed areas and that's what I paint. And then we do a couple texture lines so people know that it's fur. But if I were to go ahead on this entire thing and do little dashes across here as hair, it would flatten my whatever surface, whatever form I was trying to paint, it would totally flatten it. So that's a very long explanation to go into how we do fur. So to do, especially on white fur, I just take black and I add water to it to lighten it up to make gray. And we kind of just do, um, do, do brush. yeah, with the round two, sorry, we're switching to round two. And uh, we've done this before. They're like little do, do, do marks. They're like, um, a series of marks that are small, that are next to each other, that, and I'll try and do it bigger actually so you can see it. They kind of, um, it's like that same swooshing, right, but opposite way. I start at the top and go down. And I like my, you wanna make sure that your marks are not even in terms of height. You don't wanna do this. Because that doesn't really give us an idea of the shape of the hair or the fur, that kind of thing. So we kind of just do little texture marks where it's like, yeah, hair is kind of in there. It's moving around the form. So you just do like one or two long ones and then a few yeah. short ones? Yeah, so I do. Do they, are they fat anywhere or are they supposed to and be I, the same I, size? They don't have to be the same I mean, thickness, yeah. but you do want to switch up the height. And some of them are thick and some of them are thin. I'm always a fan of variation. So um, you just kind of play with it. So it's just little, little do 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 marks here and there. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Great. And then. Do 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 implies three marks. <laughs> Listen, Natalie, that's a great point. Natalie is a member of the Illuminati. <laughs> Natalie, valid, totally valid. But they don't have to be three marks. They can be a series. Um, I just say do, do, do. I don't, <laughs> I I don't know. Effects, Listen, this is just what I do, okay? I don't know. It's cool. I got it. Okay. And then the very last thing that we are going to practice is whiskers. I knew it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the it thing was with either gonna be whiskers or eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing with whiskers. Um, when you do whiskers, they need to be really thin. They gotta because whiskers themselves are very thin hairs. And sometimes when you make them too thick, then um, it distracts from the whole painting. So to make a thin line, we're gonna use our round two. You're gonna pick up oh that's green. You're gonna pick up some black. And I just want you to practice making long, thin lines with your round two. Now to get it thin, you're just gonna do light pressure. So let me show you. This is me pushing down like on a round two. This is how thick I can go, right? That's pretty thick. That's pretty darn thick. We want it to be nice and thin. So you're like barely touching the brush to the paper. And it might even be so light that as you go, you even like lift up your brush and like See how I like skipped a spot right there? Can they even see that? Mm -hmm. That's okay. I do that all the time. But we want that nice thin line. So I just want you to practice. And sometimes what I even do if my round two is a little bit flat is sometimes I just like press it against the pan to make the brush itself more pointy. See how thin that got? Mm -hmm. And then I just lightly go across. Now the other thing you need to remember is you move your whole arm you don't want to plant your wrist and try and do it because then we limit um, how long we can go. Yeah, no, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every time you look up, like, oh shoot. 
Jake, <laughs> listen, this is fun. <laughs> One of the comments was that when they mix their golden brown and black, they get a green. Do they need to add more black? No, um, the golden brown and the black, when you mix those together, it does kind of have a greenish tint to it. That's totally normal. Mine does that too. Uh, I think it's just the golden brown actually. And if you use it by itself and you lighten it up, it does have like a tint of green to the color. But what you can do to counteract that, if that's really bothering you, is you just um, put in a little bit of cyclamen. So that was kind of a greenish brown and now it's a reddish brown. You guys see? Did they see that? Yeah. But just so you know, if you look at this squirrel, it actually does have a greenish tint in this wash here and there. So you're in good company. This certainly right. looks much more I think we're ready. than it did a minute ago. We ready to go? Yeah, we're ready to go. All right. That's funny. Keep your thing close by your scratch paper. So there are four steps to this squirrel. Step number one, body wash. We're going to Put a nice, even body wash body. on this squirrel. Step two, we're going to do our white fur. Step three, we're going to do our face. And then the last step, step four, is the details. There are a lot of details with this squirrel. Hang in there, you guys. It's fine. We got this. OK. Let's go, team. It's go time. Let's grab. I'm going to start with my round six. And I'm going to grab a little bit of black. And I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and I'm going to mix this color together. And it becomes like a tan color that does have a green tint to it. So good, good eyes. <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel out there. Okay. And I'm just going to start and all of the left side of the body like this outlined, I'll probably go up to the eyeball and then stop. And the tail, we're going to start to fill in. So you just want to start spreading out this color. So a lot of what I like to do is I like to put down the dark color and then I just like use, grab water and just spread that color around. Now, um, this can be rough. It doesn't have to be perfectly filled in to the outline. Um, remember the outline is more just of, an, just of a general idea for you guys. So don't feel like you have to follow that so perfectly. And you can see that my wash isn't totally even. Some areas are darker than others. That's OK. There's, um, like this is a furry animal, so there's going to be variation in it. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, I'll probably do one more layer just because this wash is looking a little bit light. And I'm going to darken it up just a little. And you can adjust the color of your squirrel. If you want your squirrel to be a little bit more gray, then have more black in your mixture. Actually, I think someone painted the squirrel already and she, she just made it gray and it looked great. If you want to darken your squirrel wash, you just um, do another layer right on top. It's another great t-shirt. Doing squirrel wash. Squirrel wash, body wash. And I'm going to introduce just a gray wash on top of mine just to tone down some of this. Don't forget the hand on the right side. And when you're um, and when you're painting, use the side of your brush um, just when we're doing large areas like this because it just fills it in faster. You don't have to like um, be on top of it just doing these small marks like this. You can use, you can press down and use the side of your brush and get a nice um, wide mark. Now when I go to do the tail, you'll notice here that I have an outline in this section. And that's because this area is darker than the others. This is going to be a darker value because it's going um, around the body. So the light, um, since it's going away from us, um, it's shadowed. So I'm actually going to grab a lot of paint, like a nice dark color. Dark wash right here. So kind of in this outlined area, I'm going to do this dark section. 
And remember, it doesn't have to stay within that section exactly. We want to blend it out so it doesn't feel too section-y. So I established that dark area, and now I'm still blending out. Just pulling, just like our warm-ups. I put my dark in, and I'm just pulling that color out, just using water to get a nice color variation. Now when you get up towards the top of the tail, what I did is I made sure my wash was light. So I made sure um, it, I had a lot of water on my brush, and then I just do those, those whoosh details, or practice, that we did earlier in our warm-ups. Wo whoosh it out. <laughs> whoosh. Whoosh. Whoosh it out. Whoosh. Okay. Whoosh. Whoosh it out. And then this is the only layer I do of this top one right here is just this whooshes. You don't have to follow my outline exactly. When we do textures like that, I kind of just do more general shapes because I want you to don't, I don't want you to feel confined to have to just fill in that outline. I want you to be like, there's a whoosh, there's a whoosh, here's whooshes. And the same thing with your whooshes on your tail. We don't want all of the whooshes to be the same exact thickness. This is really hard, so I'm pointing it out to you so you're aware of it. We want some of the whooshes to be thin, smaller, shorter. If it's too much the same, it's gonna look kind of spiky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything I can Great. do to kind of cover those wildly dark lines? No, I'm sorry. <gasps> <laughs> so with graphite lines, um, since we did this with graphite paper, these are pencil lines and watercolor is transparent. So on really light washes, you can see through them, um, which is why when, that's why I strongly encourage you to do really light outlines so then that way it doesn't distract you. But honestly, in most of my work, I have pencil lines. And like even on my squirrel, you can see I have pencil lines on the side of the belly right here and on the tail. It, it happens. Great. Good job. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's the only thing I'm having an issue with is... <clears throat> Let's check it. Let's check I got it. a okay. little wild down here on the okay. bottom. So here's Jake's. Am I okay just moving it to the middle? Yeah. Okay. This is great. I have a nice light wash at the top. I think this texture right here is super cool. Um, so he just went a little bit wild here on the bottom where it went outside the outline. That's fine because... That's where the feet are. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would just do is you see, I would just kind of mimic the shape of the outline that we have. So I would just kind of round this out a little bit. Okay. So you're essentially just moving the outline down a little bit. Right. And if you don't like that dark line, just do a darker wash on top of it. Nice. Okay. We have Natalie's. She has great whooshing. We have great texture. This is good. What I would suggest is let this dry and then I think we just need to define um, the body a little bit more and where the shadow is on the tail a little bit more. So when this dries, go back in with the darker color. Because this is like a, this is more of a just brown. Mm -hmm. And I would go in, mix in a little bit more black so it's actually darker and put that shadow in. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And I want you guys to notice something like on mine, my outline here for my shadow of my tail is pretty, there's a very strong line right here, right? And um, try and avoid that if you can. So I'm gonna show you how to blend that out. So we, the reason why we don't want that is we don't want it to look blocky, right? But it's hard because with outlines, we're essentially you know, filling those in, so that's what we're tempted to do. But just take a damp brush, so get your brush wet and then kind of hit it off the side of your cup so it's just damp. And we're just going to kind of move this color around in here and lighten that up and just blend it out. Because we want it to be a smoother transition from where it goes dark to light. So I'm kind of just blending this out. And then when it dries, I'm gonna go back and do another layer on top to establish that shadow again. But it's, you want to keep in mind that warm up where you put in that shadow and then you just go to the very edge and you spread that color out so it's a smoother transition from dark to light.
Can you erase your lines after you've painted? With watercolor, with the lines, right when water touches it, you can't erase it. You're dead. You, you're dead in the water. Is that a thing? That's good. That's yeah. a, that's thank you. That's thank a you. Good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, and then just for um, interest, because I like texture and I like different strokes and all these things, as you can see here on my squirrel, it's kind of messy, right? I got a lot of different stuff going on. It's not like this really smooth, even, um, beautiful wash. So I'm going to kind of go in and um, put in a little bit more brush strokes around here. I'm just going to go in darken some areas up and then just blend it out. Because with watercolor, you want layers when we do animals. The more layers you have, then the more interest there is and texture and all that stuff. So I'm just kind of going in and just adding another layer. Because this, this kind of cool stuff happens. See how that's kind of um, separating there. You're getting different watercolor textures there. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool and pretty exciting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys are excited? It's great. And then now my tail is pretty, is dry enough that I'm going to go in and do another darker wash right on top of that shadow. And you might be afraid to let things get messy, but if you look at this squirrel close up, it's kind of messy in the, in the fur department. So allow yourself to just let things get a little wild here. It's so hard to guess where you're gonna go. We live on the edge. Oh, sorry. Am I kind of all over? Oops. Sorry, now. I keep thinking that I'm grabbing black and it keeps going in this lovely brown color. <laughs> <laughs> well here's the black you can just pull directly from that I was. <laughs> you're like that's what I was doing Legit. <laughs> definitely getting straight black and painting brown <laughs> wait for that to dry okay it just could be too wet More drying. just wait I think I'm getting yeah. like I think I'm doing this wrong no you're this not Drake is getting pretty hardcore that darkness Okay, so it's the same thing, Jake, where you were kind of following that outline in pretty good, which isn't bad, but just blend it out. Loosen that outline yeah. up. Yeah, blend that Loosen out. Loosen up, bro. Loosen up. <laughs> Lighten up. Lighten, Lighten up. up. So Lighten you see how up. I'm kind of blending this out, so now it's not such a strong outline, but we still have an idea that that's yeah. the darkest part. Yeah. So we're blending. Do do on the front? The front part? Two? No. Okay. You only are going to do that on the left-hand side of this shadow. Okay. Good question. And if you want, um, you can do a couple more whooshes, just like not all the way on the top, just kind of like almost to the top because there are actually layers of um, fur going on here. So it's good to have like a different value. Yeah, great. No, don't. You can't, can't stop, 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 won't stop, and that's fine. Can't stop, don't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. I love it. Okay. Um, that's mm -hmm. it. That's it for step one. We did Woo! our body wash. Good job, you guys. We're recorded on with this painting. It looks great. Now we're going to move on to step two, which is our white fur. So you can see here that I already have a little bit of like sections where I'm reminding you, you want to put a little bit of shadow. So similar to our warm up, I'm just going to take some gray. So I'm just taking black and adding water to it. Do I need to move this over more? Adding water to it. So it's a gray. And wherever these sections are here, I'm just going to do my do do do's. Especially you want to make sure you do them like right underneath these hands because the hands are actually resting on the fur. So the hands are casting a shadow on that fur. I like to do a few at a, at a time and then I just softly blend them out a little bit, just a little blending. And then that way it's not like just three dark lines on a totally white surface. We wanna soften that, those lines up just a little bit so just using clean water, I just blend it out just a tiny bit.
And the reason why I don't do all of the lines and then go back and blend it all at the same time is because if it takes, the longer watercolor it dries for, the harder it is to blend it out. So that's why I'll do a couple sections and then blend. Because if I wait too long, then that color is not going to move a lot when I try and spread it out. So this, if you are looking on the squirrel, this is where like the white fur has kind of gathered in an area um, that's shadowed by a layer on top of it. Dirt. <laughs> Not dirt. <laughs> it's shadow, Al. It's art. <laughs> Listen, Jill is clean, okay? Okay. And then same thing kind of up here. Just do your little doot doot doos. And then blend them out just a little bit. What I also like to do is take that light gray and go along where this like washes that we painted for our body. And I just kind of blend a little bit with the gray and the brown. Just kind of blend that out for the same reason, which is um, we don't want such a hard um, line. We want it to kind of naturally blend together. So kind of up here towards the face. Oh, I forgot. I forgot one thing really quick. Underneath the arm. Sorry, we're pausing. We're going back. Underneath the arm, there is a shadow right here. I actually have it sectioned out on the painting. It's the same thing as like there's a shadow on this tail. There's a little shadow underneath the arm because the arm is casting a shadow on the body. So put in a dark wash underneath that arm. Julia on YouTube says it's definitely dirt. What's definitely dirt? <laughs> on my squirrel? <laughs> Listen, all right. I feel like she's clean. Okay. So just by putting a little bit of a shadow underneath that arm, it should automatically almost like puff that arm away from the form. Because the, the arm is kind of sticking out, not like sticking out towards us, but it's a different part of the body. Does that make sense? And just remember to blend it out. Don't stay within those lines too, too rigidly. Mm -hmm. Great. Sorry, we had a pause on that. Now go back to the fur, sorry if you're not done. I feel pretty good about my fur. Yeah, I feel good. Do you think we should just like blend, blend this out more, blend like mm -hmm. more spots on that? Yeah, blend, I would, you did some really great blending right here, right underneath the hands. So blend those out a little bit more yeah, too, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're essentially just giving the hint of the idea that there are there are lots of little things there that are gathering. And when you're blending, it's do 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 So when I put in the colors originally, it's do do do, and then when I blend out, it's more just like just like getting it everywhere. Yeah, but when I blend, I blend down from the from, from the, the mark. from the initial mark. Okay. So if I make my initial mark here, I take water and I blend down from it. You kind of want the lines to stay a little bit. You want the yeah. lines to stay a little bit, but you don't want just like three dark gray lines or five in like a little area with on a totally white surface because those are just going to kind of stick out. We want to have a natural um, value change from like the dark to light, even if it's even if it's soft, even if it's subtle. It's nice to have. Yeah. Great. Okay, I think I'm kind of gave him like a little gray chin. The thing I'm confused that's about okay. is what we're doing on this line. Oh, that's going to be the rest of the head. Don't worry, we'll okay. do that in step All right. three. All right. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, we're going to get there. Okay. We done with our fur? That's okay. That's How fine. Do you want gray up here? That's when we that do the layer? face. Okay. That's fine. You guys are so excited to move on, which is great because we're ready to. We're ready to move on to our face. So we're on step three, you guys. We're halfway done with this painting. It's great. 
Um, using that same gray in the round two, we're just going to do the chin. Now the chin is just this area right here. It's just a gray wash. Keep it still on the lighter side. We're just gonna fill in this gray wash right here. This is beard. Beard, all right. So this kind of section right here is just a gray wash. Do I need to say that one more time? I feel like I said that phrase like four times. It's just a gray wash. <laughs> That's all it is. Gray wash. I would maybe lighten yours up perfect. Lighten yours up just a little. Now let's say you go to put in your, I almost called it a beard, the chin. Mm -hmm. And it's so dark. Like, let's say I do that and you're like, oh, that's too dark. You can lighten it up. You just got to work quick. Rinse your brush, let it be wet. And you can literally pick up the color with your wet brush, pet it off on your paper towel and just keep on doing that till it lightens up. If you let it dry too long though, it's going to be harder to pick up that color. So just kind of be aware. You I'm can... going to throw some questions at you. Okay. Uh, what size paper are you using? This is 9 by 12 Canson XL watercolor paper. You love Canson? Is it the best? Um, I like Canson because it's a great value. And um, I don't like feeling intimidated when I go to paint. And usually higher quality watercolor papers do that to me. But if you're doing super water heavy paintings, go for a heavier paper like arches or a heavier weight paper. Uh, how long does a typical painting take? It takes me like an hour and an, or an hour and a half. Me by myself, it would probably be an hour, but I think usually these lives are like an hour and a half to two hours. Yes? Yes. Will you see the do do do's after you blend them? The, you might end up blending them out completely, and that's okay, I wouldn't stress about it, but sometimes what I like to do is if I blend them out completely and I want a little bit more texture, I'll just do another layer right on top of do do do's and maybe not blend that one out, just as long as it's not super dark. Okay. We good? Yeah. All right, great. Let's move on. So we're gonna do the rest of the face now. Uh, I'm moving to my six again. And I'm just going to use the same mixture that I kind of use for the body wash to do and um, just fill in the rest of this head. This is what, golden brown? This is a mixture of golden brown and black. Now when you get to the top here, if you're planning on doing a floral crown, try and keep it really light at the top right here. If you go too dark, on the top and do a really dark color, then you're not gonna be able to see those flowers. It's gonna get kind of muddy. So usually I, I just kind of like leave it a super light wash and then um, I don't mess with it. Now the other thing, when you're putting in your face, I kind of have an outline right here, kind of almost where the snout starts. I know squirrels don't like have a snout, but you know what I'm saying, like where the nose starts. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a darker area here I'm going to kind of put that line in and then same as our warm up, I'm just going to kind of blend that out. But the whole point is we want it to be a little bit darker, right? Kind of where this, this line curves. So you just kind of drop in. Now when you get to around the eyeball, you're going to see there's the actual like eyeball and there's like a little line around here. And I'm going to show the reference photo so you can see. So um, you can fill all the way in on this head. Can they see that today? What are you trying to show? So right around the eyeball, there's like a lid on the top and the bottom. Don't color that in just yet. We're going to do that separately because that's a different color we're actually going to use. Yeah. Beth said she looks really green. She, she looks really green? Yeah. Or is that just the camera? Oh, the ones we're doing? 
I mean, it, I, it does have a green, this one is a little bit more of a greener tint than this one because I used a little bit more black when painting this one, so it looks a little bit more gray. And this one had a little bit more golden brown mixed into it. It's more earthy. Yeah. But it shouldn't be like, that's a green squirrel. Unless you want a green squirrel. Which green squirrels are, squirrels are cool. I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay, and then when I go up to the left ear, I'm gonna have like a, I'm gonna grab paint on my brush and do a dark tip at the top of the ear. So the tip is gonna kind of be the darkest. And then I just blend down. Let me move that. Just kind of blend down. Now I'm not gonna do too much detail on the ear because I'm gonna put flowers there. Um, so I'm kind of leaving like the middle part bare, but the, the thing you want to keep in mind is we like the tip of the ear, the very top to be dark. Yep. Great. And now I'm going to do like the, um, I don't know. What would these things be called? Al, what, what oh, part of it? It's not the whiskers, it's like... Just the snout? Is it the cheek? No, I don't know. We're doing cheek, this part. Probably. Squirrel cheeks? Squirrel, Squirrel cheek. cheek. <laughs> I'm, using, right. I'm using a little bit more uh, golden brown on this because I'm a fan of kind of distinguishing colors. We knew that about you. Yeah, I'm, you know. And I'm going to start um, putting my golden brown kind of right in the middle, kind of where the whiskers are going to come out. It's going to be a little bit darker, that brown. And you see how it's kind of yellow. And then I'm just going to kind of spread this color around a little bit, but still keeping the darkest part kind of right in the center of that cheek where those whiskers come out. Now, sometimes when you blend, you blend it all out. And so it's an even value. That's okay. Don't stress about it. Just wait for it to dry and just do another little, um, layer on top to where it's dark in that middle. Mm -hmm. Great. And work around that nose. We're not touching that nose just yet. And while that's drying, I'm going to add another layer right here, kind of where this snout meets the cheek or face meets the cheek because I want it to be a little bit darker right there. Yep. Should I, should I, should we do a check-in? Sure. Okay. Are you guys ready for that? I'm ready. Okay. I feel like you definitely have something to say here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Natalie, this is looking great. The only thing I would say is this, when you were trying to darken it a little bit, I think it just got away from you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you blend it out, it just keeps going bigger and bigger and you don't mean to. Water. Just lift it. Lift up that water. Pick up some of that, pick up some of that water, because sometimes if you have too much water, then the color is just going to go everywhere and you kind of lose it a little bit. So just pick that up, lighten it up. And then you can go back in. And if it's not too wet, it can kind of just stay in this area. I would probably let that dry just for a second. Um, it kind of bled into your nose. So I'm picking this up. Because we want it to be like a clear, um, like it's dark here and then it gets lighter. So I'm just picking up a little bit of that dark that bled into it, just with the damp brush. But besides that, I think she's looking great. She has super cool textures going on right here. I love this thing. This like watercolor mark right here is super cool. Um, this little color right here is great. I think it's looking good. You're welcome. So just when that dries, let that dry and then um, just put in a nice thin little line and Blend it out just a little. 
Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're not going to go super wide with your strokes. Okay. Oh, wait, this is yours. Sorry. Okay, Jake, how are you doing over here? Okay, this looks great. Um, this looks really nice. You have great texture over here. This on your tail, that transition is really nice. Um, the only thing I would say is I want to darken that and blend it out just a little bit. Is it okay if I paint yeah. on yours? Um, so I'm just going to put in that dark line again. Just kind of put that. And then when I go to blend it, I'm just going to blend it out just a little. So I'm not like taking my whole brush and going across um, the entire head of the squirrel. So it's kind of okay to leave like little brush marks, mm -hmm. you know, just a little bit away if you, you know. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's okay to leave little because sometimes you are going to do a brush mark that's like that. And that yeah. and that's cool. Like, that's fine. Don't when even like some of this, I was like, that's mm -hmm. kind of weird. But now that it's dry, it looks... It looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, it kind of works. And um, that's the great thing with watercolors. The more you add those layers, um, the more you're going to get some like interesting textures that are kind of accidental, but still pretty awesome. And then just remember to go all the way to these. Um, just want to make sure I'm not... You're going to fill in this part too. So kind of like here and go all the way to like the end of the eyeball. Okay, but it's looking great. Very nice. Okay, so um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a little bit of pink to our ear. So for our pink, like for our nose and our eyelid and our ear, we're gonna mix in a little bit of the cyclamen to the golden and the black. So it just has like the tiniest hint of pink. Because when you look at animals' ears, and um, I guess ears is the best example, is they, they all have like a skin color to them. They have a, a pinkness to them. So we're just gonna take a little bit of pink and kind of like at the, in the middle here, we're gonna just introduce just a touch of pink and then just blend it out. And that's going to give us like a skin um, color almost. But I'm not going all the way down because again, I'm leaving space for a crown. Yep. But, and also blend some of this brown down a little bit because it's not like the ear is not like a super, super dark outline. And then all of a sudden it's pink in the middle. It just kind of blends like it transitions from like a dark tan and then um, to a little bit of a hint of pink. Yes, very nice, exactly. Yep, and just blend that out. Blend it out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very nice. Okay, and then I'm gonna move on to the nose right now. So just using that same kind of pink and I'm just actually gonna blend it with a little bit of the golden. I'm gonna leave black out of it. And then it turns into like a, like a peachy color. And um, the bottom part of the nose is gonna be the pinkest part. <laughs> That's okay. So I'm doing like the bottom part pink and then I'm just going to blend out that top part. So the top of the nose is lighter lighter in value and then the bottom right at that little tip um, it's going to be a darker i don't want to say pink we don't want to use straight cyclamen because that's like more of a purple color and that will just be like too too much you still want to keep it within the realm of like skin tones so that's why i add a little bit of brown or black to it to tone it down a little bit yeah great gorgeous yep here, let me help you for a second. I'm having issues tonight. <laughs> so I'm just going to blend this out a little bit more. <laughs> so we're going to go in and we're going to cover this. See how this brush mark kind of went astray? We're going to cover that with the nose shadow, so I'm not going to touch that. I'm just blending this a little bit more for you. Blend that out. There we go. Now he has a nice, she has a nice strong pink bottom that blends out. 
And then when we do the black part, it will cover up that mark, so you'll be fine. How are you guys, how's everyone doing out there? I feel like we're kind of more in like focus mode. Yeah, come on, internet. <laughs> but it's going great. You guys are doing great. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our mouth. So I'm gonna switch to my round two. And just using black, I'm gonna do just a really thin line right in this middle. It's gonna connect all the way to the bottom of my nose. So it's just gonna be a nice thin line like that. So just kind of that, that lip Does it line. Does extend like all the way out to this cheeky line? Yeah, so or right now it? I'm just putting in this oh, okay. line and then I'm gonna go in and do the lip line itself. So where this, this line is right here, I'm gonna go in with black and also and does it go all the way up to the nose? Yes, I had mine go all the way up to the nose. Okay. So now you're making the lips a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. So you make the lips, and then you're gonna do the other, now when you do this other lip right here, we're only gonna do like a black mark on the bottom part, because my pencil line is enough of a line for that to be there, and I don't want it to be too dark, because we don't wanna like outline our squirrel. Yep, exactly. And then you do kind of a little, um, like where the leap lips meet, the two sides of the mouth meet, there's like, <laughs> they know what I, you guys are following on. <laughs> I'm trying to explain these things. I'm gonna add just a little bit more black right there because those are two sections of the mouth meeting and there's like a little gap. So it's just like this tiny black little gap Yes. Is that good or should I no. do anything else to it? That's great. Natalie, great. Jake, great. You guys did it. You did the mouth. Good job. Sometimes it's so intense because you're like, oh, okay, dainty thin lines. And it's just. Yeah, but if you just have to do the one line, mm -hmm. it's easier than like making the whole stomach. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, oh, I can do one little. I can thing. do one little. Rob says, my Jill is a jack with a real thick beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We like, uh, we like having male okay. squirrels too. That's great. Okay. So you guys, we're doing great. We're, we're still working on the face. You're doing awesome, keep with it. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that pinky mixture, so I'm grabbing that cyclamen, mixing in a little bit of that golden brown to get that tan color. And I'm gonna put in the eyelids. So just kind of where this section was where we left the eye, I'm gonna put in... Um, Is that this color here? Yeah, the eyelids there. And it's just, it's that same thing, which is, um, like animals, they have that skin um, thing, and some areas. <laughs> Go on. Okay, okay. Wait, is it on the so out like outer eyelid? one or the <laughs> inner one? Like it's this line. So it's this line and this line. So this whole area. Here. So the bottom part of the eye, this thick line, and then this thin top line here. And that's because they're um, right at that eyelid around the eye. There isn't actual fur on that part. It's just skin. So that's what we're kind of trying to do. <laughs> Listen, I'm really good with words. <laughs> like a verbal yeah. ellipsis. See how I have like a really giant lid? I'm not yeah. sure I want it that big. Or this, did... this top part of the lid should be colored in with the... This is the with color? The, uh, no, with the... Uh, the green? The brown. <laughs> the brown, the brown, thank you. The fur color. Okay, so, but I'm, I'm putting the right pink, the pink in the right yeah, place. Yeah, you're putting the pink in the right okay. place. All right, good. You're like, why am I putting pink around this eye? You guys, trust me, trust well, my me. My looking kind of pinky eye. Listen. You're saying fill this in a little bit with some brown? Or not yet? No, I think you did, I think it's fine. I think it, yeah. mine's the same oh, way. Yeah, yeah. If it's too sectiony for you, or if you're just like, that's just I'm a really- on that top part right there. Yeah, then yeah. If, it's, if it's just kind of distracting you a little bit, then just do a wash of, of like brown, kind of right at that top there, and blend it out. All right. Yeah. All right? You ever heard yeah. of that? You're fine. Yeah, a little wash. <laughs> just a little wash on top of it. And remember, maybe you put a color down and it's just like super, super pink um, that it's like sticking out. 
then just do a wash on, if you can't lift up that color, um, just kind of do another, just do like a brown wash over it and that will tone it down. Okay, you guys, we're doing great. Mm -hmm. I think we just have um, one other part to the face before we move on. Let's do the eye. No, 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 no. We gotta wait for it to dry. Oh. We're gonna do the shadow. Oh. Oh. We're gonna do the shadow on the other side of this lip. So it's had a good enough time to dry this black line that we made. I'm just going to take a damp brush. I'm not picking up any color. And just using the color that's there, I'm just gonna do a swoop on this side of the lip just to give it a little bit of shadow so it's not perfectly white. And that's it. It's just one little, yep, just to introduce a little bit of shading. And you're basically pulling the color from the line mm -hmm. that you drew, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna do the left side of my nostril. You're just gonna follow that curve of the nose on the left-hand side with black. And if you want to make like Is my nostril bigger. Yeah, you can make your nostril a little bit bigger. I'll make mine bigger too. If you can follow just that nice smooth line, you can keep it like that. But we're just kind of defining that nose and obviously the nose does have nostrils. So there would be a black area where that hole would be in the nose. Yep. Great, great. The nose hole. The nose hole, you know it. It's called a nostril. Nostril. Great. Gorgeous. Is that right? Beautiful. That's right, Jake. Yeah, you did it. I, I think I fixed you it. You nailed it. Fixed it. You fixed your, you fixed your rug bird nose. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the eye. We're gonna do the right eye first because we want time, we want to give time to the left uh, wash that we did, that pink wash we did around, we wanna let that dry. So we're gonna do right eye first and I'm just grabbing straight black and I'm just filling in this little bump, which is the eyeball on the squirrel. It doesn't have any white left oh, in man. it? It doesn't have any white in it. I might have it. just noticed my, you might want to show this on top camera. What? But look at that, that's like a crazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had to like wiggle a little bit with that trace. No! That eye is mine too. No, out. My, it's, like a, it's supposed to poke <laughs> out. Look, <laughs> look like, at mine! Ring. Look at the original. It okay. pokes out. Alright. Okay? I'm just saying I've got You're it. in good company. You're, <laughs> I mean, I got a little <laughs> bit more on that. Your eyeballs are bulging on that one side, okay? okay. It's fine, it's great. I'm just gonna ease, it, ease that curve a little bit. And there's no white section on this one because this eye is actually turning away from us. It's on the other side of the head so that we don't see any light reflecting off of that part. How do you handle the area that touches the fur? Are we, is it I kinda, like a straight line or do you yeah. blend with the fur? the fur like over it later maybe? I'm not blending. It, mm -mm. I kind of just, I just leave it. Okay. That one's a hard line, you guys. All right. We so did it. Once you Sometimes it, it the bulbous eyes no, call fine. for. I just, I just wanted to know because like, it looks weird right now. No, But Natalie, I'm trust sure, me. I'm sure it's going to look normal at some point. It will. Animals are weird. Yeah. Animals are weird. Animals are Especially weird. bulbous one-eyed animals. Bulbous-eyed <laughs> animals are weird, okay? That's my Pokemon name. <laughs> bulbous eyes. Bulbous <laughs> okay, so now we're going to start filling in the other side of the eye. Now, um, kind of touch around your eye to make sure that wash you lay down a few steps back is dry. If it is not dry, do not do this part. Wait till it dries, okay? Operational. So just taking this black. Just black? Just black, okay. straight black. black. I'm going to just follow the shape. And I have two little dots in this eye, and those are just gonna be white. So paint around them. And the reason they're white is because eyeballs are wet, and we have to show that they're wet by having a little glare off of them. So I'm not gonna talk during this part, because I'm gonna while I work around these tiny little dots. I think on the tutorial that I taught, I actually like lost one of them. That's okay. Yeah, you for real did. I for real lost one of them. If you just have one little white glare, that's okay. 
And remember to, um, I'm still gonna do like a white, I mean a black outline on the right side of the eye. My eye got a weird shape. <laughs> <laughs> How can I fix this funkiness? Okay, let me see what's going on here. She looks kind of angry. She's a winker. Okay, so what I'm going to do with yours, I think it's fine. I think it's just the, up weird. the curve. It's a winker. What the winker? Here, I'm just going to make your eye a little bit bigger <laughs> and work on the shape a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to... No, don't stress, Natalie. It's okay. I have a very hard time making eyes. And I'm just going to curve this. I'm just making your Is eye a little bit bigger. Job? Ooh, could be. <laughs> Not tonight, though. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong crowd. Wrong crowd. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not with her brothers. There you go. Your eyes just bigger. Well, thank you. But it should still, it does still have that same shape, which is, see how it's kind of rounded on this so side? I just, like made up a dot. So no, a dot. yeah, that's should great. I, once the dot. black dries, should I go and put some of the, some pink around the back of it, or does it matter? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't I go around the back. Time. I think it's fine. Okay. I think, I think it's okay. Okay, we have like our face. It's looking good, you guys. We're doing great. I think we're ready to move on to our floral crown. The, now that you have an eye, but it looks way more squirrelish. Well, the ear gets covered by the crown. I knew it. Um, or we can do the tip of the ear. Just put in that little brown at the tip. And that way if you're, uh, and then just use a light wash to cover the rest of it. And that way, if you have like a gap in your flowers or something, there's something there. Okay, now, how I do- So this is the whole squirrel except for the crown? Well, we- um, Then there's details. There's details. There's details. There's details, there's Al. There's details. The Whiskers second part of the detail. The detail. We have little, Oz. we have little fur textures. We oh. have whiskers. Let's get all those. Whoa, we didn't do whiskers. No. Look, look, right. we're whiskerless. Okay, so when I do my crown, my floral crown, I just use straight cyclamen and then olive green for the leaves. Are you using a two or a six? I'm using a two, okay. and because I'm making small flowers. Now you can do your flowers any way. You could even do, you know, your little circular petals like that. Can they see that? Am I still in yeah. frame? Not yet. So yeah, you can do just round circular things like this. I did a scribble flower. That's what I call them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scribble flower. Okay, this is what you do. I'll do it big. And you can make your flowers as big or as small as you want. Um, I pretty much just do a scribble, right? It's like any shape. I leave the center white. I rinse my brush and I just go along the edge of what I put down with water in a circular motion. Like that. Now you're like, that doesn't look like a flower. When you do that on top of the head of an animal with leaves, <laughs> it looks like a flower. <laughs> Put it on top of the head of an animal. <laughs> Listen. Um, so you can do that a couple of times. Um, you can do different scribble shapes. But just to remember, I like to leave the center of the flower white. That's the only thing I like to do. Now I'm going to do it tiny. So for our tiny little scribble flower, it's going to be like, this so little. Rinse your brush. And just kind of go along the edges of it. Just like that. And so now it's a tiny little flower. If that, if you're just like, I don't even like how that flower works, do your own, do your own flower. Yeah. There's many different flowers you can do. But that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to do one kind of right here where this ear meets the head. Just a little scribble. Be a band name. Scribble flower? Where the ear meets the head. Oh, <laughs> that is good. <laughs> the ear. So now I have a cute little flower. Jake, you don't have to put flowers on yours if you don't want to. Yeah, I'll keep it on top half. I mean, I'm not saying that guys don't little, like flowers. I'm just I'm saying. I'm a little worried about the uh... scribble flower. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to show you my practices, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I did a scribble flower here. I'm going to do another one kind of where the other ear meets the head. Just a little scribble. Take some water, blend it out. 
Now, you have to remember, water, florals lends itself to watercolors, or do watercolors lend to florals? What yeah, am I trying that to say? Right? <laughs> they work well yeah. together. <laughs> you could seriously just do like um, just a little right, circle, a just a little circle, and then like a dark center, and you're like, oh, that's a flower. It's just a different style. So don't stress about the flowers. There's many ways to paint them. They're very forgiving. Just kind of do a roundish shape with a center, either a white center or a dark center. So I put in my flowers, now I'm gonna put in my leaves. Just gonna take a little bit of this olive green and just start doing leaf stems. So my leaves are kind of just, they're super tiny. I'm still using my round two to get those thin lines, but I just do a top leaf first thin little stem, and then leaves on either side. And I also do like a bigger leaf. You just kind of want to start filling in um, the spaces in between these flowers with leaves. Maybe you want to have more flowers. That's cool. Go for it. What's up? No, 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 you're doing great. Here. Here. All we have to do is just kind of round them out just a little bit. Round, okay. round. There. Just going to drop in a color right in that center. Look at that flower. Oh, that's great. All Nailed right. it. Now I just do petals. I think I'm... Leaves. Leaves. Yeah. Flower almost killed me. Jake, you're doing great. It looks great. And I know we're focusing because usually when we do small areas, that's when we like hold our breath and Everybody like gets everyone quiet. gets really quiet because we're like, we're working tiny here. I also like to do just little berries. I call them berries or they're like buds. You just do a grouping of just pure cyclamen. Just like little circular dots. It's a great filler, so if you have like some white spaces that aren't quite big enough for a flower and a leaf doesn't make sense there, you can just do um, little buds. And your squirrel is not going to look complete yet, and that's because we haven't done whiskers. Whiskers add a lot to the squirrel. I knew there was something. <laughs> it's the same thing with the bunny. Like the bunny didn't quite look like a bunny until we put those whiskers in. Yeah. It looks great. Keep going. And do some like, maybe some dots. Yeah, do some dots. The only thing that you want to keep in mind when you're doing flower and like stems is you don't want your leaves to be like straight, straight vertical. You kind of want them to like um, bend out, that kind of thing, or bend down. Because usually when we see plants or like things gathered, the stems like have a curve to them. They're not sticking straight up or sticking straight down. That's my one suggestion, I guess I would say. Okay. So we're going to start putting in just some fur texture. We finished the crown, you guys. Good job. Good job on the crown. Awesome. We're just going to start doing some fur textures, very similar to our fur textures, that doot doot do marks. Um, I'm going to mix a little bit of golden brown here with black. You just want to make sure that these texture lines are darker than the wash that you have going on. They, you don't want them to be like straight black, but you want them to be darker just so you can see them. And just kind of like on the arm here, I'm just going to do a couple little doot doot doos, kind of going down, doot doot do, doot doot do, just like that. Doot. And then also kind of on the forehead of this squirrel, we have a couple little texture lines going on. Are you blending those or are you just putting them in? I'm just putting them in. If they're too dark, you can blend them out a little bit. Maybe I'll blend out a couple actually. Just blend some out, get some variation in there. Brooke, 
called you on it, Jake. She said, you're not following the oath. You better be nice to yourself. Yeah, yeah Jake. Like, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Brooke saw that from a mile away. Man. Brooke. <laughs> Thank, good job. Okay, and then on the other hand, I put a couple little lines because they have their little... I don't want to call them fingers, but I don't think claws. they're claws. Are they claws? claws? Paws? Yes, Natalie, yes. <laughs> so just a couple little, um, just a couple little lines showing that like there's separation. It's not like a mitt. Just do, do, do. Paws is such a soft word. Velocira Velociraptor paws is way <laughs> I'm not gonna do, um, I don't think I really need any texture lines on this area, especially because I got a lot of watercolor texture going on. I'm, I'm happy with that area. I don't think the texture lines would really be seen. I'll do a couple kind of here, like kind of on the neck here. Just do a couple do do do's. And on this other hand. Yep, great. Looks great. What's up? The hands look weird. <laughs> Natalie. Natalie, you gotta be nice to yourself. No, okay. I mean, they're great. I like weird things. I, I like your paw on the right hand, this left one. Um, I'm gonna blend out a little bit. Okay. The left one is a little bit more midi. I was trying to, like, I was trying to make a match, and then it was just like. This. No, I really only did the palm marks on the other side because we see those those fingers. It's pretty midi. Okay. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna give behind. I I have a white mark behind my eye that I just noticed. I'm just gonna fill that in really quick. You guys probably don't have that, so so just give me a second. Give me a second to catch up to you guys. Filling in a white mark behind my my eye. There we go. Okay. You guys ready for the whiskers? Oh man. Okay. <laughs> this is our very last thing. Our whiskers. Now remember, when you do your whiskers, you want, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Super thin lines. Don't have them be totally straight. If you just go like straight, they're gonna look too like, you know, like boing, you know? So you wanna like have them have like a soft curve in them. And they're gonna go in different directions. So if you're looking at your reference photos, I have a whisker that goes up. I have a whisker that kind of goes to the oh. side. I have a whisker that goes down. Mm. Okay. <laughs> this is like... So same thing on the other side. So you, you don't want your whiskers to be totally straight because that's gonna make them look a little bit funky. All right? All right, take us there. You guys, you can do this. And just remember, it's just a painting. Yeah. Maybe you do it and the whiskers are thick or you don't like them. That's fine. Do another one. You have paints, you have paper, you can do this. Okay? So I like to turn my page because I like to, to go out. So I start kind of right here on this side of the lip and I'm just going to... And some are shorter. They're, they're all different lengths, lengths going on here, people. We got, we got all the things. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be light. I'm literally not making a line. Is there paint on your... No, I see no, a line. No. I don't think you have paint on your brush, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> She's just using water. She's ready. It's fine. It's fine. It's practice white. Okay. And then they also have like um, whiskers on the top of their eyes. So kind of coming out from the top of the eyes, it's the same thing. They're not going to be as long as the ones coming out of the mouth. So kind of keep them less than an inch. And they're just going to be little curved little whiskers coming out there. Eyebrows, we call them. Those aren't eyebrows, are they? No. Mm -hmm. I guess they wind, could. They're, not, they're eyelashes. True okay. on old men or on squirrels. Okay, and then I'm going to do the left-hand side. Now, this side is a little bit harder for me. Um, so sometimes what I like to do is actually turn my paper like, like upside down curved. And then I do the whiskers that way because it's easier for me to kind of curve out than like 
Okay, just do whatever feels comfortable for you. If you have to turn your paper, that's fine. And just kind of, and kind of where that spot is, where it's darker, that's where they're coming from. They are all the same length. Oh boy. That's okay. You better get some blood or you're dead. <laughs> And I want, and then I kind of like turn it back around and I'm like, okay, what are those shapes? I'm going to do one more kind of curved up. <clears throat> Just give it variation. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> they look great. No, they look great. Okay. I did a couple on the left hand side, but not too much because we have a flower crown going on there. We got a lot going on there. Um, I just did a, a little bit coming kind of right off here. And you guys, Ew. look at this. That's our squirrel. We did it. Bada boom, bada bang. You guys, Woo! good job. That, this was, it had a lot of steps within the steps, and you guys did great. Let's hold them up. Oh. Natalie. Awesome. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. Sincerely. <laughs> Not joking. Kind. Not sarcastically. We love it. We love art. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. They it's look nice. so good, you guys. Oh, so Wait, nice. Jake. Put, put yours closer to mine. There we go. That way he doesn't have to, you know. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Yay. She looks great. Oh, so good. I can't wait to see them. Post them, share them. I know it's scary putting your stuff out there, but you guys can do hard things and you're strong. And when other people see you do creative things, it makes them want to do creative things. And it makes you just seem a little bit cooler. So post it, share it, tag us in it. We also have a Facebook group. Let's make art together. You can share it there. You can post it in the comments. I love that. Then everybody can see it. You can tag us on Instagram. Let's go make art. And um, it was a great time. That was a great yeah. time. Yeah. Good time. You guys, and um, we're doing a live this Friday at 12:30. That's the time we said, right? 12:30. 12:30. We're painting Central. our postcard. 12:30 Central Standard Time. We're gonna do just a quick little live session painting our postcard for Starla. Um, and we can get those out in the mail. It's our Make Art Matter. So that's this Friday, 12.30 Central Standard Time. We good? We're good. I'm just trying to find it next week. Do you have it? Oh, it's in the box over there. Sorry, the citrus. No, all the way against the wall. Don't spoil it. Sorry, sorry. It could be, uh, <laughs> it could be anything. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing yet. Wait, hey, Wait, here it comes. Here it comes. This is next week, next Tuesday. We are doing... Bye. Slight sisters, gorgeous. <laughs> so that's what we're doing next Tuesday. We're releasing the tutorial for that tomorrow so you can watch it, paint it, share it, love it. That's it, right? We're good? You guys did great. You guys did great. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it.